Welcome back to For the Record, I am Mike Sachs. Now the investigation into missing five-year-old Harmony Montgomery shifted to a murder investigation yesterday. The New Hampshire girl disappeared between the end of November and beginning of December in 2019. And although police were not informed until over two years later, they're now saying that the girl was killed in early December. Now, although her remains were not found, recently discovered biological evidence led Attorney General John Formella to this conclusion. Law enforcement also removed a refrigerator from Adam and Kayla Montgomery's former residence back in June. Harmony's father, Adam, had custody of Harmony at the time of her disappearance. And although no charges have been placed against him in regards to her murder, he was charged with second degree assault, interference with custody and endangering the welfare of a child back in January of this year. Harmony's stepmother, Adam's estranged wife, told law enforcement that she last saw Harmony via video chat around Easter of that year. And she's been in and out of jail on charges in connection to, but not directly linked to, the Harmony's disappearance. Now, the couple told law enforcement that Harmony was brought to Massachusetts to be with her mother around Thanksgiving 2019. And after several visits from Child Protective Services, where a black eye was seen on Harmony at least once in October 2019, it is reported that abuse was not found. Now, Attorney General John Formella spoke out at a press conference yesterday. Let's give that a look. We're here today to provide an update regarding the ongoing investigation into the 2019 disappearance of Harmony Montgomery. Back in January, we announced that then five-year-old Harmony likely disappeared sometime between November 28th and December 10th of 2019. Since that announcement, members of my office Members of the Manchester Police Department, the U.S. Marshal Service, the FBI, and other law enforcement have devoted thousands of hours gathering evidence and pursuing numerous leads. All of these efforts have led us to conclude that Harmony Montgomery was murdered in Manchester in early December of 2019. I have Mark Weaver, a special prosecutor in Ohio and former state deputy attorney general there here with me to break this down. So, Mark, what's the implication here that this investigation has been upgraded from missing person to homicide investigation? I mean, it's an, it, there isn't much physical evidence, it seems. It will be hard to actually prove the case on the prosecution side if they even proceed to any, filing any charges in, in homicide in this investigation? Sure, it's a heartbreaking case all around to read uh, what probably happened to this child and the neglect and abuse of these parents. But that doesn't take away from the prosecution its burden to prove each and every element of a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, lay people sometimes think that there has to be a body in order to prove a crime. Sometimes you'll see a TV or a movie that says that. That's not the law. You can prove a murder case without a body. It's just harder to do it because, as you mentioned, we don't have the physical evidence. And so as somebody who has to walk into court in front of a jury and prove all of my elements, this one makes me a little nervous. It's enough to make me think something really bad happened here. And I could probably get the jury pretty close to a preponderance of the evidence, but I'd have to see what they have before I could say we could make this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, and there's still some time to find out what does come up in the investigation. Now, the chief of police up there in New Hampshire, Alan Aldenberg, also spoke out at the press conference yesterday. As the chief of police for the city of Manchester, <clears throat> I'm beyond saddened that we stand here today to announce that the disappearance of Harmony Montgomery is now officially a homicide investigation. As I stated from the beginning of this investigation and throughout, every effort has been made to bring Harmony home to her family. Our commitment to bringing Harmony home has not wavered, nor will it. Bringing Harmony, bringing Harmony home will continue to be the number one priority of the Manchester Police Department. I want to take a moment to publicly thank the Manchester Police Department detectives and the New Hampshire Attorney General's Office for their steadfast commitment and dedication to this investigation. There have been many detectives assigned to this investigation and I'm grateful to all of them, but I want to specifically recognize Captain Sean Layton, Captain Matt Larichelle, Sergeant Jamie Cavari, who could not be here today, Detective Jack Dunleavy, Detective Scott Riley, and Detective Max Rahill, as well as Deputy U.S. Marshal Billy Tufts, who's here as well. I thank all of them for their tireless work thus far in this investigation. I am grateful for the compassion and dedication that they've given to this investigation over the past eight months. 
they've experienced many ups and downs, and many moments of frustration and sadness along the way. But they've remained focused and remain undeterred as they enter the next phase of this investigation. <clears throat> I feel it's important to recognize these true professionals as their job is an extremely difficult one. It is even more difficult when investigating the homicide of a sweet and innocent eight-year-old girl. It is not often that a public official takes a moment to thank the media, but I feel it's important to do so. I spe specifically want to extend my gratitude to WMUR and Fox Boston for continuously keeping Harmony's story at the forefront. Both outlets and many others did so with compassion and professionalism, and for that I say thank you. I know that over the past eight months that there have been many discussions, speculation, and questions relative to where the system failed Harmony. And I myself continue to share the same concerns and still have many remaining questions. However, the homicide of this little girl rests with the person or persons who committed this horrific act. The Manchester Police Department will do everything within the limits of the law to ensure that the responsible person or persons for the murder of Harmony are brought to justice. Mark Weaver, this is an all-hands-on-deck situation, it seems. We have the chief of police in Manchester, New Hampshire there, also talking about state police, and also talking about a U.S. marshal who was on the scene as well. What does that indicate with how seriously this, uh, the law enforcement up in New Hampshire is taking this case? Just from watching this and reading about it, my sense is this was a case that shook this community to its very roots. A lot of people were praying and hoping that this child would be found. And so this press conference, at the very least, is bringing some closure to those people who thought this child might be found. And secondly, it may be shaking the trees a little bit, looking for some witnesses, somebody who's willing to come forward and tell us what they know now that they know this is likely a murder investigation. So often the community wants to know what the final outcome is when they thought someone was missing. So you could see a, a tone of that. But it's, you know, it's also a chance to see if someone can come forward and give them some evidence so they can, in fact, find the killer and so they can, in fact, prove all the elements of the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. Take us deeper into that here procedurally. What next steps are we looking at? Well, you'd have to go in front of a grand jury and, let, and take testimony to see who knows who. And now if the parents know something, what typically happens is you turn one of them and you give them some deal to... Uh, in return for a lesser sentence or to not be charged with a certain crime, you have them testify against the other. Now, there are some privileges between husbands and wives. You, it's kind of testimonial privilege that applies to things that you heard, but that privilege does not extend to things you saw. So if one of them saw the other doing something to this child, uh, the person who saw it could be used to testify against the person who did something, and that's probably where they're going to start. And no suspects have been listed yet, although you see on the screen there Harmony's father, and they've spoken about her stepmother as well. Uh, what will have to happen to charge someone with Harmony's murder here? Well, the authorities have to bring forth enough evidence to prove at least probable cause that one of them did it. And uh, prosecutors have an ethical duty to not bring a case unless they think they can convince a jury that they're going to win. These are high burdens. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be in our system. It's supposed to be hard to convict somebody. Absent a body and without a theory, it's even harder. So I think they're going to develop this case as best they can, given what they have. What kind of time frame are we looking at here? Quickly, um, what's, how fast is this going to turn around, do you think? Well, there's no statute of limitations on murder, but witnesses memories fade people leave the state people die physical evidence deteriorates so you never want a case to sit too long but they can bring this uh, anytime they can get the uh, evidence together and prove their case yeah, mark it's a truly heartbreaking case we've just begun mm -hmm. to hear the facts of it and i'm sure much more will come out over time as the manchester police continue to look into this for now, though, we are going to have to go to break. This has been For the Record on Law and Crime. I'm Mike Sachs. Please stay with us. We'll have more for you in just a few moments.